I am very excited. How many of my tutorials have you watched? I know that many of you always leave me comments and I so enjoy reading your comments. Thank you for all your comments and stopping by here at my channel once again for you and I to share some creative fun together. Now, I wanna share with you my latest obsession. Have you ever wanted to create hexagons? What do you think, hexagons? I don't know about you, but there's something about creating these very popular little shapes that brings me joy. I've always wanted to create massive amounts of hexagons, but I haven't been able to find the time to bring myself to English paper piecing. So in this tutorial, it's a three-part tutorial, I will walk you through creating the embroidery files to create these hexagons within my embroidery machine. Now don't fret if you don't have the same machine as me. If you do, I know you're gonna enjoy this part of the three-part series, and I'm gonna enjoy walking you through that process. But if you don't have that capability on your machine, you can grab the embroidery designs over on my website. If you're one of my Patreon subscribers, these designs will also be available to download for you. So you can grab those whenever you would like. Now, once again, I have found a way that I find really works for me. I'm gonna call it modern hexagon construction. Our, our modern hexes. I'm gonna walk you through creating the embroidery files within the machine using the IQ Designer. I'm gonna also take you through stitching the designs and trimming and flipping the designs as well as stitching the designs together. So if you're as excited as I am, I'm gonna have to warn you that this might be a new obsession that you just can't shake because they look so wonderful after you put them together. And it's really such a relaxing, creative experience. Now let's don't waste any more time. Let's head over to the machine and create these embroidery files as well as stitching them and sewing them all together. I hope you enjoy this process as much as me. Now I know that this is a little different than English paper piecing, so have an open mind. And if you enjoy this process, then let's just start a new obsession together. If you're not a member of my Facebook group, I'll leave that down in the description. And if you start creating hexes along with me, post me some pictures of what you've created. I can't wait to see your hexes. To create our hexagons, we're going to use the IQ Designer in my Baby Lock Solaris. We'll select the IQ Designer area. And if you'll notice on my screen, I have a rectangle that I've already placed onto my workspace. And that's because I will be stitching in a five by seven frame. And in order for me to get that boundary that gives me a visual outline to create by, I'll go up into the top area of my machine where it looks like a little piece of paper with the top right corner turned down. This is my settings icon. Let's go into the settings icon. You'll notice that I'm on page eight. And in this area, this is where we find the embroidery frame display. We can apply whatever size frame that we're going to create in to give us that boundary line. So if I select in this area, you'll notice that I have quite a few to choose from. But again, for this project, I'm using the five by seven boundary. I can just scan through and find whatever size I would like. Again, just notice I have my five by seven already selected. So we'll select OK. So there we have our frame size that we want to stitch in specified to create and place our hexagons within. Now the first thing that I like to do in this process is to create a rectangle to show me where to lay my fabric. So basically this is what I call a placement stitch. And in doing this, I'm allowing myself to use less fabric. I know that all of us probably want to save as much fabric as we can and get the most out of it. This is why I am creating a placement stitch. Now, if you don't want to create a placement stitch, you can hoop your fabric within your frame and then you'll have no need for a placement stitch. But because I want to save fabric, I'm going to create a placement stitch first. The first thing I'll select is my stamp key. We'll select the stamp key. I'll use a square that has an outline on it. We'll select OK. 
And you'll notice now I have a red square on the screen. Let's size this the size that we want. I'll select size. And then you'll notice I have some sizing icons up here. I want my rectangle to be seven inches high. I'll use this icon where you see the two arrows facing up and down. And as I place my finger onto my wired mouse, you'll notice that the square will get taller. And notice up in this area too, you're gonna see those measurements move. I'm looking at the top measurement. This is the one that I would like to set at seven inches. I went a little bit too far, so let's bring it back down. We're at seven inches high. Now I want the width of the rectangle to be five inches. So now I'll use these icons. Let's bring it in to five inches. So here I'm using the icon with the little arrows facing towards the inside. Oh, I went a little too much, so I'll just pop over here and select this icon until it measures five inches. Now we have our five by seven rectangle. I'll select okay. And up in the area here, this is where we find our line properties. And my machine defaults to a zigzag stitch. I don't want this to stitch as a zigzag stitch. I want it to stitch as a straight stitch. So I'll select my line properties. I'll apply my straight stitch. I'm gonna change the color just for the fun of it. I'll select okay. Highlight my fill cup and then we'll just touch the rectangle. I can use my mouse or I can slide my finger across the line and you'll notice that you'll hear a little beep. That has applied that line property now to our rectangle. And you'll notice up here in this area that it changed as well. We have our straight stitch and we have the color that I applied to this stitch property as well. I like to use this over and over again, so I'm gonna place it into the memory of my IQ in the memory pocket of the machine. And it'll be there just in case I need it again and I won't have to resize that rectangle or apply the line properties to it as well. So let's select next. Now here's where I like to make another decision. How long do I want my stitch to stitch? You'll notice that this is in inches. I'm a little more comfortable reading how long the stitch will be in millimeters. I'm gonna slip over to page nine using my Baby Lock Solaris 2. And you'll notice here up at the top, I have the option to go from inches to millimeters. We can pop back and forth to change that as often as we need to while we're creating our project. So now you'll notice that my stitch length is at 2.0 millimeters. I like this to stitch at 2.4. I've tested and I just find that that is my favorite stitch length when I'm creating a placement stitch. This stitch is gonna stay within our stabilizer. We won't need to rip it out. And I just like to have a little bit of a shorter stitch length when I'm stitching within just my stabilizer as a placement stitch. So we'll select okay. We'll set it, select okay. And now we've placed our rectangle on the embroidery side of our machine. Let's create our hexagons. I'll select add. We'll go back into IQ Designer. And you'll notice I still have my boundary line here because I wanna make sure that whenever I place those hexagons within the area, I wanna stay in that five by seven embroidery field. Now that we're back on the IQ Designer workspace, I wanna use some of the background lines that I can bring into this area to help me find the center point whenever I am designing my project. Let's go back to our settings icon. And right here where it says embroidered frame display, we can choose underneath the grid option, a centering hash mark, the little red or the large one. I'm gonna use the large axis and that's gonna give us that nice center position visually. And that'll help us as we're designing. So let's select okay. So now you'll notice that I have that centering axis as well as I still have my five by seven background area. Let's go into our stamp key. And let's grab our hexagon. We'll select okay. 
And now you notice that we have a hexagon on our workspace. The next thing that I like to do is size it. So let's select size and you'll notice I'm in millimeters. Now when I'm sizing this hexagon, I like to size it by looking at inches. That's what I'm most comfortable with. You may be really comfortable with millimeters so you can use this measurement as well. We'll select our settings page once again. We'll go to page nine of the Baby Lock Solaris. We'll switch our measurement back to inches. And now when I size that hexagon, I'll see inches. Now as we size, I like looking at the top measurement. I will size this down symmetrically. And that means I'm gonna use this icon where you have all four of the arrows pointing towards the inside. I don't wanna skew it. I don't wanna choose any of these because if I did that, it would change the height and the width independently. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna use this icon. I'll select it, I'm watching that top number, and I'm gonna stop when it gets to one and a half inches. There I am. So now I have my hexagon that measures one and a half inches on that top measurement. Now I've tested this, I've stitched quite a few of these, and I know that this is my favorite measurement. So let's select okay. And what I'll do next is I'll copy and paste to create another hexagon. So we'll use our duplicate icon. We'll use our copy and our paste icon, which copies the image and it pastes it as well. You'll notice that it brings it onto the workspace a little bit offset. So what I like to do next is either select size or rotate. And that way we can use our touchpad down here at the bottom. I like to center it. And then I'll use the arrow to the right to locate it over to the right. Now keep in mind, we're stitching in that five by seven frame. So we wanna make sure we stay within the five by seven area. You can enlarge your screen as well by selecting the icon up here in the upper left-hand corner. Let's bring it up to 200%. And you'll notice that now we can visually see that outer edge and align it accurately to the outer edge where we would like it to be. I think we're gonna have plenty of room here between to cut these hexagons apart. Again, I have tested this a time or two, so I know that this is gonna give me plenty of space to trim our hexagons in just a little bit. We need another hexagon, so we'll once again, we'll duplicate it. I'm gonna choose rotate, put it right there in the center, and now move it over to the left. Notice again, here's that boundary line that we're using, that five by seven boundary line that we applied onto the background of our workspace to visually help us accurately design within that five by seven hoop. Okay, I'm pretty close, but I'm not on top of it. I'm gonna go in just a couple of, try to even it out with this one. All right, now just in case you're wondering, hmm, maybe I don't have these evenly spaced to the left and to the right and you wanna be a little more accurate, we could select them all. And if you wanted to move them so that we are evenly on these outer two edges, left and right, you could do that as well. But I'm really happy with the way these are positioned, so I'm not gonna worry about that. So I won't make any changes. Let's zoom out a little bit. So now we have those three hexagons in the center. Now, in order to get the most out of our fabric and our workspace area, we'll select and copy these two hexagons and position them above this row of hexagons. And in order to do that, we'll select our selection icon. I really do like using my point to point icon when I do this. We've got different options here. These are a couple that you could use, but I really like this one. This is my favorite because we're choosing two of our shapes. And I just find that my little point to point icon allows me to get around these hexagons pretty accurately and easily. Then when I get close to where I started, I'll click it and you'll notice that now we've selected those two hexagons. Let's close that window. Let's duplicate it. Now we have two. And now that we have those two selected, let's use our rotate icon. We'll bring it up and we'll scoot it over. And what we're doing is we're positioning visually to align these so that they nestle in these areas above our first row. So I'll bring it down a bit. Now keep in mind, I've tested, so I know visually about how far apart I want these to be so that I have enough area 
to trim them apart once it's time to do the trimming. And we're gonna trim our hexagons to about an eighth of an inch. So we don't need a whole lot of space, but we definitely need enough space so that we have an eighth of an inch around every one of our hexagons when we're trimming them. Once again, I've tested this, so I know that we're good with that amount of space. So we'll select okay. Next, we'll select all of these. So let's go back to our selection tool. Let's just select them all. Notice how it selected them all. I wanna duplicate them. I'm gonna place these right back in the center and then I'll drag them down. How easy is that? And I'm using those red lines, which shows me the outer space of what's selected. I'll zoom in a little bit for you. And you'll notice that once again, that five by seven boundary is visually giving me a great way to know that I'm staying within my five by seven embroidery field. Let's zoom out. This looks pretty cool. Now we need three more hexagons right up here at the top so we don't waste any of our fabric and we get to stitch quite a few hexagons at one time. So we'll choose our selection icon once again. I'm gonna use my point to point selector. I really like this one once again. It's gonna really help me duplicate three of these easy. We can even zoom in if we would like. Okay, that's gonna give me a better visual concept. Now that we're zoomed in, I'll just start clicking so that I go around my hexagons, all the way over here to the right and up to the top. I can go up a little and then down, kind of staying in the center. It's like a maze. And now that I selected close to where I started, it automatically closed and selected those shapes within that area. Let's go back to 100%. Guess what we're gonna do? I bet you already know. Let's duplicate those three. I'll select rotate and place them right back on top of where the three are located that we duplicated. And we'll bring these three all the way up to the top. Isn't this fun? I love creating these types of concepts. Okay. I think that I've positioned them pretty good. We can zoom in if we want to and take a look. So if we look at this top edge, we'll notice that we're within our five by seven area. I'm pretty happy with all of that. I think that I've gotten it correct. I'll go back to 100%. Now you'll notice that my line property says it's a zigzag stitch. Your line properties always default to a satin, a zigzag stitch, but I want these to be straight stitches. I could have even applied this property before I started creating my hexagons and positioning where I wanted to. But you know what? I like the fact that I can make this happen whenever I want to make it happen. So at this point, I'll go in here and select a straight stitch choose a, a red color that way you'll see it clearly we want to select our bucket our fill cup and we want to apply that red straight stitch property to each one of our hexagons I can use my mouse and click notice how it changes the color you want to make sure you've selected every one of them I can even use my finger Oh, did you hear that knock knock? That means that I already applied that line property to that shape. Listen to this. This is what you hear when you know you've already applied it. Oh, you get the little double knock. Now, another thing that really is giving us that confirmation that we've applied this stitch property to each one of our shapes is the fact that it's changing to that red color. So it gives us that visual reference as well as hearing the little knock knock sound if you try to apply it to one that you've already applied it to. So you, it's really great that you have a visual and a hearing concept whenever you're applying those line properties. Now that we've applied that line property, we are ready to bring these hexagons over to our embroidery side of our machine. We'll select next. Once again, I have the option to decide how long I want my stitch to stitch. And again, within this design, when I'm stitching those hexagons, I like them to stitch at a smaller stitch length. I'm not comfortable seeing these measurements in inches, so I'll pop up to my settings screen one more time. We'll slip over to page nine on the Baby Lock Solaris. If you have a different machine that has this functionality, this option might be located on a different page number. Let's apply millimeters. Select OK, and now we see that stitch length in millimeters, 2.0. Every one of my hexagons, I want to change that stitch length property. 
So instead of doing those one at a time, we'll use our linking icon. You'll see this icon that looks like two chain links linking together. When we select our linking icon, it'll grab all of those shapes that has that straight stitch line property applied to it. So it's gonna really make it fast and easy for us to edit how long we want this stitch length to be. So let's select that area and we're gonna bring it up to 2.3. I find in creating my hexagons in my IQ Designer, if you've ever done English paper piecing, we are really going forward with a more advanced and easy concept of creating these hexagons. But in order for us to flip and have a nice sturdy stitch, I'm bringing that stitch length down a little bit shorter. It just makes me feel more comfortable and I've tested a time or two. So this is my preference. Be sure to test yourself whenever you're creating different projects and see what your favorite settings are. We'll select OK. We've applied that to all of our hexagons. We'll select Set and OK. And now you'll notice we have our placement stitch for our fabric and our hexagons. Now it's time for us to load our stabilizer and our fabric within our hoop and get to stitching. Let's select embroidery. So keep in mind, if you look at your screen, right now you will notice the rectangle. That's what's going to stitch first. We designed it that way, our placement stitch. And then the next things that'll stitch will be, go forward and see, our hexagons. I'm gonna bring it back to our first stitch property. I hope you enjoyed that process. There's so many things that you can create in IQ Designer. Now that we've finished up this part of the tutorial, let's head to part two and stitch our hexes in our embroidery frame. We'll trim them and we'll flip them and get them all nice and neat to prepare for our last step, stitching them all together.